Offers. And on today's video, I'll be sharing 10 useful tips to help you perfect your drift. Let's jump right into today's video. Tip number one, as you guys can see behind me, I love high vis line. So high vis line is, is just a great tool to use. Uh, there's a lot of people that use clear. Uh, there's a lot of different colors of line out there on the market, but I highly, highly recommend that you choose a high vis line and take advantage of the benefits that it gives you. From being able to keep all your lines out and away from each other, see whenever a fish may grab it and go to the side or go out to the center. A lot of us have always seen that big fish bite that is from the bank and they grab it and they take off running out into the center of the river or center of the lake and not even pull the, line, pull the rod down. But we see the line sweeping across the top of the water and that allows us to be able to catch that fish and minimize a bunch of tangles and a big mess just because we use high vis line. Okay, it's not just about looking good or matching things. It's also the benefits of being able to see it, detect bites, keep things from getting all tangled up and just saving yourself time on the water. A lot of you guys, if you know what this is right here, this is our number two tip right here. And that is take advantage of drift socks. Uh, drift socks are a big tool in my boat. I keep a lot of different variations and different sizes. I always prefer and like the ones with foam on top and a some sort of weight on the bottom of the big opening. That helps you a lot in, in it deploying itself. Um, in swift current, the ones that don't have that will just get collapsed and they're kind of a struggle and a pain to get opened up. But drift socks not only slow you down in wind, um, but they allow you, like I'm doing here, to be able to control my boat in a straight position using my trolling motor, allowing my trolling motor to use a little bit more power by having that drag back there and keep myself straight. Now the wind's not really blowing, it's blowing a little bit. We got a few gusts that want to push the back of the boat around but that drift sock back there will keep me straight, okay? That's gonna also help me with time on the water and, and that is because I'm not gonna be fighting the wind. I'll be focusing on watching my sonar. Am I marking fish? Am I in an area that I need to stay? Am I on my line that I wanna be on? Am I in a section of river that I wanna be on? Just because I can control my boat that much better. For me, I like to have three or four different sizes. That right there is a 36, fairly small uh, for this boat, but I have everything from a 36 all the way up to like a 10 foot drift sock. Now that's extreme, but that is in for, like say a big lake like Willer Lake and where I really am gonna be going with the wind and I wanna slow my boat down dramatically, okay? With that being said, drift socks can be dangerous. So if you're using drift socks and you're in wind and you have to be mindful of the waves and whether they're getting larger coming over the back, you're allowing them to come over the back um, and the direction you're going in that wind versus the drift sock and the drag. Tip number two goes right into tip number three. So tip number two was taking advantage of drift socks and the ability that it allows you to to control things. Tip number three is speed. We can control our speed. There's a lot of things we can't control. We can't control if the fish is going to bite. We can't control, um, you know, whether the fish are active or inactive. Uh, they're in the mud or in the brush or structure cover, things like that. But we can control our speed. And any time that we can control that, play around with it the entire time you're out here. Go faster, go slower, until you pick up on absolutely what those fish are wanting. So boat speed is a huge thing to pay attention to, pay, be mindful of, and play around with. So tip number four is to take advantage of the rigs that are out there on the market today. Not only on the market, but out there for you to learn how to tie. And what I mean by that is right here we have a double hook, Kentucky rig. Okay, this is one of my absolutely favorite rigs of all times to use, no matter where I'm at in the country. But I also use a double hook uh, dragon rig as well. 
So take advantage of those double hook rigs. No matter if you got two rods, four rods, or eight rods, you can use different styles of bait in different depths, and that allows you to get those bites that you may not have gotten by just using one hook. So tip number five is to whenever possible, whether you're drifting or dragging, or even if you're anchor fishing in the summertime, low current conditions, clear water, get your baits away from the boat. Now that can be either planter boards like we're doing today, or floats, whether you make them, you buy them from Patriot uh, Catfishing, or a different company like that, take advantage of those tools that are out there. This is a good one. This number six is one of the best tips that I could give you guys. So please pay attention to this one. Number six is to follow the current, not necessarily a specific area. And I know I'm gonna have a bunch of questions on this one. I know there's a bunch of people like, what is he talking about? I thought you just fished ledges or you just fished certain contours. Let the current dictate where you're going to be. For example, last week's video, I was more out into the middle of the river. But at the beginning of today's video, you heard me say we have a little bit more current than I did last week. We, had, we got not significant amount of current, but good current. And I have moved in a little bit. That is because the main current line has moved. Your current will always move in a river as the current dissipates or goes down, it will come into the center of what is the main river channel. Now that can be on one side of the river or the other, but it can also be in the middle of the river and it can go from one side of the river to the other. But as the current speed picks up, then those underwater contours and features of that body of water, the way that body of water is built, will then start to dictate where those seams are going to Appear. Now they're always going to be there, but they're going to be more defined with more current. So in that situation, I kind of let the current take me where it wants to because I truly believe that that's where everything is going to go anyway. And that's kind of where the fish are going to set up to an extent. Now, as that current gets really fast and there's a lot of flow, then you have to move a little bit um, inside the seams instead of in the main current. All right, so tip number seven, nope, that's eight, seven, there we go, is to use multiple baits whenever possible. Now, if you guys have been watching me for a long time, then you know how important it is to me to have fresh bait. No matter whether I'm coming out here to do an hour and a half show, whether I'm fishing a huge tournament for lots of money, or just pleasure fishing, fresh bait is key multiple pieces of fresh bait is even a bigger key and something you guys want to take huge advantage of because there's been times out on the water that I would use skipjack and wouldn't catch anything on it but would catch everything on moon eye or on bluegill or on gizzard chad or vice versa okay and then there's days where you can catch it on anything but always have a couple three different styles of bait types of bait and then use different sizes of bait in that mix as well. That is huge and crucial, and make sure you guys are doing that if you can. Tip number eight is pay attention to the water column. Now, I'm watching the camera a lot, but I'm also paying attention to my sonars and paying attention to where those fish are at in the water column. Now, for me today, we've got about a mile and a half an hour current, so the fish are relatively close to the bottom of the water or the lower third of that water column. Now, as the current level slows or dissipates, then those fish, especially blue cats, will suspend four, five, eight, ten 10 foot up into the water column and you have to pay attention to that. So always pay attention. If you're seeing fish and you're like, I don't know if that's a catfish or not, put a bait up there and see. You never know, right? But always use the method of if there's less current, suspend them if there's more current then you know keep them closer to the bottom all right and if you're in lakes i started talking about this a little bit ago this is huge and a very very big thing if you're in a lake in the summertime 
with no current, look for a thermocline. Now, if you don't know what a thermocline is, then there's a lot of videos out there that will tell you what it is. But if you look on your sonar and you're in a lake, it is super easy to see and to find. Stay above that thermocline. If, that, if you're in 50 foot of water and that thermocline is at 20, suspend your baits up into 20. I've been to lakes where we've been trolling or dragging planter boards suspended, catching fish in 50 foot of water, but only catching them 15, 20 foot down on live bait. So always pay attention to your thermocline and what those fish are doing within it. So I kind of covered this already, so I'm just gonna touch on it real quick, and that is tip number nine. Pay attention to the thermocline. We talked about that in the water column. So a thermocline is, is really just zero oxygenated water, right? So the below that water, fish really can't survive. You'll see some down there, but very, very sl uh, seldom slim always stay above that thermocline. So if you ever in water temperature or water that is say 80 and above, you see a big fuzzy blue line across the, <clears throat> across the screen and you're like, what the heck is that? I've never seen that before. It can't be that much bait. Odds are it's a thermocline, especially if you don't have any current in that body of water. Lakes primarily they go um, below or deeper than 15 foot are a big hitter for that. All right, folks, the last and number 10 tip to help you guys kind of perfect your drift, and that is to cover more water. Now, what I mean by that is to pick an area that you like you guys can see behind me. I got a nice, big, long, straight stretch, right? It is a good area. It do, we don't have a super amount of current, so I'm just covering water. Unless we have a lot of current or unless you just find a really small area that is just loaded with fish, Drifting is all about covering water. The more water you can cover, the better. Um, we want to pick an area that's kind of consistent, um, that is you know, relatively uh, a good area in the summertime, and we can just cover water. Nice big flats, uh, mud bottoms, things like that. Well folks, hey, hopefully you enjoyed tonight's show. It was a blast. I really enjoyed sharing this information with you guys. Hopefully you found value out of it. If you did, make sure you hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button if you, if you don't mind. Share it, I would greatly appreciate that as well. Hey, I'm gonna try to be back out here next week, but until then, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the water. God bless you guys.